in 12 months. Sean. Yeah, thanks, Glenn. Um, I, mean, I work for Woodside. We're an oil and gas company. Traditional heavy industry. What on earth are we doing at the Amazon Summit? Um, so I'm going to give you a bit of context. The big product we produce is liquefied natural gas. It's gas that you were used to burning in your barbecue, uh, but it's liquefied at minus 161 degrees Celsius. So a little bit cold. We ship that product around the world, um, and it's used for baseload power generation, mostly in Japan and Asia. So we're powering cities. We keep the lights on and we keep people warm. But as Glenn said, you need to have a pace of innovation. I'm almost embarrassed to say the pace of innovation in heavy industry is not measured in weeks or months. It's measured in years and almost decades. And we, need, we set about changing that. And we set out a mantra called think big, prototype small, scale fast in order to change that culture. Think big, better make sure you're working on a problem that is going to pay off. It's not a science project in technology. It's going to solve a problem that the world or the business needs. Prototype small, make it easier for the engineers and the innovators to test, to fail, to push the boundaries and uh, allow risk to be taken without consequence being so large, which in our heavy industry has always been the case. So prototype small. And then capture the advantage. We need to scale, scale into our industry to make the, the difference that we set out to when we think big. So let's take a look. How do we liquefy gas, right? Minus 161 degrees. We're going to have a fly through on Pluto. He mentioned Pluto. Pluto is actually a gas field and it's an uh, LNG, liquefied natural gas facility. It's a little bit big, costs a little bit of money, about $10 billion. There's a helicopter footage here flying over it right now. Um, it'll switch to a 3D model view so that we can zoom in because they don't let helicopters very close to this because it is gas and it does explode. We don't like that. Um, when we bought this plant in 2012 and commissioned it um, for that little price tag, um, it came, not batteries included, but it came with sensors, lots of them, around 200,000 sensors. And as Glenn pointed out, they weren't connected, not connected to the cloud. They were connected to do certain things. They were measuring temperature, they were measuring pressure for an original design purpose. But we had this concept of how on earth can we use all that data? And you can see there, that picture there that just highlighted the LNG train, that's the fridge that reduces the temperature down. And it literally is just a really, really big fridge. But how do we prototype? So we've zoomed into a small piece of equipment that treats the gas. That small piece of equipment is bigger than this entire room. So this was our prototype in big data and using those sensors, and we connected them into the cloud. And this piece of equipment, every now and again, has a problem. And that problem can shut the plant down for weeks or months, which is not good news. And we needed to detect that problem. The problem was called foaming. Now, best example of that is beer. If you were to pour a beer real quick, it foams over the glass. That's bad news. It's really bad news in a gas plant like that foaming over. One, we can't see it. It's enclosed in all those big towers. So we went about with data scientists to analyze the small number of sensors, in our instance on this piece of kit was 10,000 sensors, and see whether or not we can detect foaming. We brought 30 years of operating experiences with those data scientists and all that data to come up with not only detection, but as you can see with those with really keen eyes, a two hour and a 72 hour and up to a one week forecast of when foaming might occur. And so we got not just the data collection and the analysis or the theory or the model, we got insight. 
that an incident was coming and we could take action to keep that plant running. That was our prototype. In time, that took us six weeks. This had a dramatic impact on the culture of our organisation because we were used to technology evolving in many, many years. Now it was evolving in weeks. So where to? That was back in the end of 2014 and last year we activated all 200,000 sensors into the cloud. We actually got a call from Amazon. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> Little bit of a spike in your data. Would you like some help? And they were great. It allowed us to scale, AWS allowed us to scale that 200,000 with literally the flick of a switch. We now stream those sensors into over 6,000 analytics models doing all sorts of things from monitoring a valve, worrying about whether that valve's likely to fail in the next month or two and we should send a maintenance tech out, through to protecting that big piece of kit that's bigger than this room. And it runs over 3 million calculations of, uh, per day, tackling all sorts of problems. But this is only one plant. We have six of them. And so as we look forward, with all the expanding into not just the, our other onshore plants, but all our offshore facilities, our vessels, we have a lot of infrastructure that's got a lot of sensors on it that aren't connected yet. And we're looking to connect those to analyze the next generation of problems. And AWS allows us to scale that really easily. But it, when I started, you know, we had a culture of technology evolving into years. Now it's in months, it's down into weeks, and it's had such a positive impact on what would traditionally was a heavy industry that wouldn't be at a conference like this, so one that's pushing the boundaries of IoT and making a difference. So think big, prototype small, and scale your own business. Thanks for listening. <laughs>